Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Betsy and today I'm going to show you how to do a DIY propagation box with artificial lighting because you just spent a bunch of money on plant cuttings and you're broke and you ain't got 300 euros to spend on a professional setup. I started using this method last winter because the winter in Paris is like eternally gray. There is very rarely a day with direct sunlight. And I bought a bunch of African violet cuttings and some Hoya cuttings, some epiphyllum cuttings, and I really wanted to make sure that they would do well and that they wouldn't just like die and that my money would go to waste. So I started Googling around and I actually was inspired by Doug Chamberlain. He, in one of his videos, he shows how to make a box very similar to this. So I have to give props to Doug for giving me this idea. To make my box, I use a big clear plastic storage container. If you live in a place where there is a lot of light, like you have a room that gets a lot of light during the day, you don't have to use the artificial light or all the other elements that I'm going to be showing in this tutorial. You can just use the box as a kind of like little greenhouse or terrarium for your cuttings and put it in your brightly lit room. And for plants that require a lot of humidity, like Hoyas, uh, Epiphyllum, African Violets, things that just propagate really well with high humidity, they're gonna do well in there as long as there's a lot of bright and direct light. But I personally put mine in my bathroom, which has zero windows, so I really need to use the artificial light. And like I said, in the winter, super, super gray. I just really wanted to make sure, just be absolutely positive, that my cuttings were going to grow. And it worked wonders, so I wanna show you how to do it because if you're on a budget, it's a fantastic way of making sure that your plants propagate quickly and prosper. My box is about 12 inches or 30 centimeters in height. If you are gonna use a light bulb, an artificial lighting like I do, you wanna make sure that your box isn't too much taller than that because your bulb needs to be like within a foot or so of your cuttings in order for them to have the maximum benefit and get the most light all over. And I will talk about the light bulb that I use later in this video. So here's how you're gonna do. Get a clear plastic storage bin with a clear lid. These are pretty easy to find. You can get them in cheap hypermarkets or hardware stores or dollar stores or you know, wherever. You need scissors or wire cutters. Extra durable aluminum foil. You can see that mine is résistant, as most French tend to be. You don't wanna use like the real flimsy cheap stuff cause it rips too easily. It's gonna be annoying for you, trust me. You need duct tape or really any kind of heavy duty tape that can withstand higher temperatures cause you're gonna maintain temps between like 70 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 and 27 degrees Celsius. Wire mesh, professionally known as galvanized steel hardware cloth. Or you could also use something called egg crate light sealing panel. It's made of acrylic. I find that the wire mesh is a bit cheaper, but it's also a little bit more flimsy since it's thin and made of wire. So, you know, you choose. Slices of PVC pipe that are all the same width. I don't know what these are called, but they work and I found them in the PVC pipe aisle. You can also use PVC pipe caps. A cheap flex lamp. I use this one because it was like seven bucks. I tried to find one of those clamp lamps that you can get in pretty much any hardware store in America, but apparently the French haven't gotten those yet. Like they were the first country to carry out a human face transplant and they're home of the first woman to ever win a Nobel Prize, but they can't handle a clamp lamp. Whatever. You'll need a thermometer slash hygrometer, like my TP55, so you can monitor the temperature and the humidity inside the box. I use an LED bulb with an output of 1600 lumens and a color temperature of 6500 kelvins, which mimics daylight. And then you'll need a programmable electrical socket timer so that you can control what hours of the day your cuttings get light and darkness. Plants do need darkness, so you can't blast them all the time. The first thing I did is cut a hole in the lid of my box to fit the size of the lampshade circumference. I first started with no hole at all and just let the bulb shine through, but I found that too much heat developed inside the box, greenhouse effect, 
And so the hole allows for like the maximum amount of light to shine into the box from the bulb, while it also allows for some air circulation. And it also prevents the bulb from like heating the plastic of the lid too much. I found that the hole helped to maintain the perfect temperature within the box. Without the hole, it was really getting way too hot. Next, you're going to cut the wire mesh or the acrylic light ceiling panel so that it matches the inner dimensions of your box because this is what your cuttings are going to be sitting on. Then you're gonna line the interior of the box with aluminum foil and duct tape. You want the shiniest side of the aluminum foil to face the interior of the box for maximum light reflection, right? The light bulb is shining into the box and the aluminum foil is reflecting the light everywhere within the box. And so this is, this is great, this is awesome, you want that. That's what you want. I personally try to use as little duct tape as possible because, I mean, you just need the aluminum foil to stick together and not fall apart. And duct tape is expensive, especially if you're buying that name brand stuff. So, I mean, you know, you don't have to go crazy with your tape here. Just make sure that the aluminum foil sticks together. Also, I the first time that I made this box, and you can see it in the blog article that I made about it, which I'll link below. I put aluminum foil in the bottom of the box as well. I don't really think it's necessary. Um, what that did was create a real gross mess <laughs> because the, the plants, you know, you water them and then water pools in the bottom, you get some like soil and stuff down there and then it makes it harder to clean out. I couldn't, so I just decided to nix that step this time and just put aluminum foil around the edges of the box. You can put aluminum foil on the bottom of the box. It's totally up to you. It worked for me. My The last time that I did this, it was awesome. Everything worked super duper great. I'm not gonna do it this time. If I find that my results are not as good as the previous time that I did this, I'll freaking put aluminum foil on the bottom. I, I, I'll, I'll fix it, you know? I cut out a little piece of aluminum foil from the side so that the display of my TP55 faces outward and I can keep an eye on temp and humidity without opening the box. I'm using a scalpel that I bought for a pottery hobby that I started and never really followed through with, but you could probably just use the edge of sharp scissors or a sharp knife. Don't cut yourself! Put your little PVC pipe caps or rings on the bottom of the bin and then place your wire mesh on top of those. This is meant to elevate the little plant pots or whatever you're keeping your cuttings in. When you water your cuttings, water will inevitably drain out of the pots and pool in the bottom of the bin. So this is going to prevent the pots from sitting in water and keeping the soil too moist all the time. Then you can Put your little plant cuttings in your box on top of your little platform here. Close the lid and install your lamp and turn it on. <gasps> Magic! You can see my box in action. I keep it on a cupboard in my bathroom because the light is just really aggressive. You can see my little planties in there. And so far, it's worked pretty well. And don't forget your programmable socket timer so that you can control when your light turns on and off. Plants cannot be in the light 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They do need some time in darkness to carry out like complicated processes that I am not going to get into in this video because it's just a DIY tutorial. It's usually recommended that plants get 12 to 16 hours of artificial daylight. I've been using 16 hours with the lamp on and eight hours with the lamp off and my plants are in complete and total darkness because they're in my bathroom which has no windows and that's worked really well for me. My cuttings grew like wildfire. They did really well so I'm going to continue doing that. 16 hours of light, eight hours of darkness. And now about the bulb that I use. This is not any kind of special bulb meant for growing plants specifically. It's just a bulb that I got at my local hardware store. It has an output of 1600 lumens and 6500 kelvins. I am by no means a professional in the subject of artificial lighting of plants. I have done a little bit of research and I will tell you what I know so far. I'm gonna start simple with just a couple of definitions of the things that I'm talking about when it comes to lighting. So 
What is a watt? A watt is a unit of power, and it's also what's going to affect your electricity bill. Back when we used incandescent bulbs instead of LEDs, we used to go by the wattage of the bulb. We would look at the bulb and say, okay, it's 75 watts. That's pretty bright. I can put that in my kitchen and I'll be able to see everything that I'm doing. But we don't go by watts anymore because we use LED bulbs and the watts are much lower with LED bulbs, which is why we've made the switch. They're much more efficient. Now we go by lumens. What is a lumen? A lumen is a unit of light measurement. So since we've switched from incandescent to LED bulbs, we no longer go by watts because these are much, these use less power. We go by lumens because lumens tell us exactly how much light this bulb is going to put out. This one puts out 1600 lumens. It's really freaking bright. The bulbs that I usually use in my apartment, like in my bedroom or in my living room, are usually around 800 lumens. In my kitchen, I use something like uh, 1100 lumens. It's a little bit brighter but 800 lumens, it's kind of nice, uh, relaxed lighting. It's not super bright. And I would say it's comparable to like a 60 watt bulb back in the days of the incandescent. You also need to know what a Kelvin is. The Kelvin is the unit that we use to measure the color temperature of the bulb. So in our homes, we usually use warm light. You'll see like soft warm or soft light um, on the bulb package. And that usually means that it's around 2700 Kelvin. It's just a nice, relaxing, warm light that's more on like the orangey yellow side of the spectrum. And then higher up on the scale, like 6500, you have really like light that's bluish in hue. It's very cool light. For plants, you need to be on the daylight end of the spectrum and 6500 and up is what would mimic daylight. Lumagrowth.com says that if you can provide 300 to 800 lumens per square foot of your plants, then that should suffice. Uh, clearly I went a little higher because other research told me that 1600 lumens is really ideal for green foliage growth and for having it like within one foot of your plants. And if you have incandescent bulbs that are like 1600 lumens, 6500 Kelvin, don't use those. Incandescent bulbs get really, really hot. The best types of bulbs to use are LED because they don't become extremely heated, uh, even though they put out a lot of light, and something called high output fluorescent, which are often used um, to grow plants. That's a bit more complicated than what I'm trying to accomplish today. So I'm just going to stick with the good old LED that I can buy at the hardware store down the street. And there you have it. It really is that simple to make your own propagation box with artificial lighting. You don't have to spend hours poring over research on the internet looking for which bulb is perfect for your plants. And it, I mean, it goes deep, <laughs> right? You can you start reading about it and then there are terms that you don't understand and it's going to get really confusing and it depends on if you have a flowering plant and if you're trying to produce flowers versus green growth or if you just have cuttings and you, you, it just it gets really complicated i have personally not divin divin why did i say that i have personally not dove that deep because i don't really like using artificial lighting in my home I hate the color hue of this bulb. I keep it hidden on top of a cupboard in my bathroom so that we can't see it when we're like relaxing in our living room or, you know, doing whatever, living, living our lives. Because the color temperature is such a cool, bright color. I just find it extremely distracting and just, it's really aggressive. Um, and I have a small apartment, so it's not like I have a separate room where I can just grow plants or something like I'm you know I'm living in my jungle here so uh, I just haven't really done copious amounts of research on artificial lighting because I don't use it personally if you do have any questions about it leave it down below and I'll do the best to answer you because I do love <laughs> researching and I do love learning new things and if you give me the opportunity to do it I probably will I hope you enjoyed this I hope you find it useful if you do want to make your own box now you see it's really easy. You can do it all by yourself. Save a couple bucks. If you do it, let me know. Let me know how it goes. Let me, you know, I want to know if, if you have as much success as I do. Let me know. 
I also wrote a blog article on this subject that you can check out. It's got pictures and stuff. Uh, I'll leave that link down below. I just want to thank you so much for watching and for supporting me. If you would like to support me monetarily, you can check out my Patreon account. I'll leave that link down below. You can donate any amount starting at one US dollar a month. And I'm putting that money towards improving the production quality of my videos. So thank you again so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. Please subscribe and I'll see you soon.